Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be back. Um, today is the seventh day in the month of March, 2022. My name is Heritage Adisa, market analyst at Out Forex. And quickly, as usual, we check through the markets, find out what the dominant sentiment is, see the opportunities, and then how we can take advantage of it. But please remember that this is just a communication material, and nothing in this communication should be considered as investment advice or investment recommendation. Um, users acknowledge that investment in FX and CFD product is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which users are solely responsible and liable. Now, what we have this morning in terms of the overall market environment is another tilt towards the negative side. Um, over the last couple of weeks now, or sessions now, there's been a lot and a lot and a lot of strain in terms of market environment. And we've seen it because of the major tensions we've had within, between Russia and Ukraine, where there has been a lot of back and forth invasion here. You know, um, talk of nuclear, talk of, you know, attacks on nuclear sites, and then talks of sanctions around from the US, its allies, Europe, you know, a lot and a lot and a lot. And that still remains a major, major theme, right, in the market. And these tensions definitely does not bode well for market sentiment generally. And we've mostly seen risk of payout for the last couple of weeks. And then you look at what we have starting today. Yes, in as much as that environment is still very much dominant in the market. We've not really had any tilt positive. Yes, there's been talks here and there between both parties, but today there'll be another one. And even the Ukraine foreign minister says that hasn't seen or he doesn't still see any progress even being made going forward. Right? I wrote here, I said risk of environment, right? Um, tensions in Europe between Russia and Ukraine continues to be the major driver in the market. Talks are set to continue today, but even the Ukraine finance minister doesn't see any progress going on. And there's been talk that Despite the massive sanctions on you know, Russian individuals, um, on Russian banks, on even the Russian central bank in terms of their foreign reserves, all of that economic pressure, right, that has not really been able to stop Putin. And then Western power and as well as you know, the allies like the UK and Japan are now considering a ban on Russian oil as well. Now, obviously, that brings out about you know, a big chunk of Russian oil, of oil supply generally in the world, global oil supply, you know, brings that out of, you know, the market. And that obviously makes or supports oil prices. Russia is one of, is the third, you know, largest oil, you know, producer in the world. And then apart from that, we have the major, major, major part of the Europe economy, you know, um, delivering over 30% of European oil, right? And about almost 40%, about 39% of, you know, gas in Europe. So all of that is a major, major, major part of input to the global markets. Now, now, if there will be a ban all of this, that means that that chunk of oil will no longer remain in the market. And that means that prices will continue to jump high. So that has seen oil prices jump gap to the upside, right? Massively to start the day. Um, apart from oil, other commodities, right, are also seeing a lot of upside because of the strain. Russia and Ukraine are major exporters of commodities generally and because of this trend we are seeing less and less of you know markets or we're seeing more of markets saying that this has a negative for you know the the the, the, the supply market when it comes to commodities right and that has seen commodity price commodity currencies also push high right so commodity prices are higher generally and that has kept the likes of the Aussie the likes of the Q even the card supported despite the fact that we still have this overall clouded and negative environment generally. The euro continues to be the laggard amongst the major FX, falling the most against this two currencies that we mentioned earlier. I said equities continue to push lower amid a negative environment. US 500 falls, oil prices push higher. We'll look at that now shortly. shortly right? On talk of embargo on Russian, excuse me, on Russian oil as well. So that's just keep on the back of our minds. The VIX, the fear index pushes higher. So obviously that also points to a more advanced negative, um, advanced market environment. The bond market remains up, right? And the dollar index is also supported. Yes, first of all, with risk of flows into the dollar as a safe haven currency. Then also the euro is heavily weighted in the dollar index. Will the euro keep being pressured, right? Obviously the dollar index will keep being supported generally. I also wrote here earlier, I said risk of environment, risk environment rings negative and that should particularly remain you know um, a pressuring factor for the likes of the euro and the pound although commodity currencies like AED, NZD and CAD are not expected to be pressured in such environment because we have rising commodity prices pushing them high apart from rising commodity prices there's not um, another particular reason why we're seeing them push higher yes we can look at the central bank sides but even that is not enough right when we have geopolitics in the front of our faces, obviously every other thing takes a back set. But I also wrote here, I said the market has to be particularly very sensitive to headlines and new developments. So in going to this session, if you want to take a trade, you would like to see further pressure on the likes of the euro, further pressure on the likes of the British pound, right? I would prefer, you know, upside 
you know, in this particular currency, despite the environment, but obviously you could also consider something like JPY or even the dollar as well. The calendar is going to be like one. We don't really have so much going on in the calendar today. Yes, we talk about one for Europe. Look at it now in a bit, but even with that, with the tensions in Europe, obviously you don't expect you know data to be a major major driver, right? And markets will continue to remain focused on you know developments in Europe. Let's just look around across board. This is what we're saying. You look at the equity space in release, the FRA 14 today's session. We kept seeing for the downside. This has been playing out coming from last week and has continued today's session as well. You look at the UK foot here as well. We push higher. Yes, we came back to retest very close to the 50, you know, test 50 average here, with an average here, and then we've continued to see four downs on this. You look at the index from the Japan, um, the Japan side, Asia side as well, downside in today's session. On the US side, downside, um, the S&P 500 or the US 500 as well. Let's look at it in a bit. In today's session, today is 7th of March as well, downside. All of this points into a more negative environment. I like this particular one because, you know, we've always had this level marked up on our chart for a bit now as a key level of support. If we just go back a bit, you look at this level, it said that previous resistance, support, 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 support. And now in today's session, we've really broken that to the downside as well, which just says... The technical support levels that we've had on this particular asset have not really been able to hold. And obviously, this still doesn't look good for risk assets as well. We could continue to see this push lower as well. The next point of target around here should come in around this previous lows going back to late February. But apart from that, really, yes, that also coincides with very close to these lows around the 24th, late January as well. So that could also be one to pay attention to in terms of some form of support. But the outlook still looks very negative. So there's that to still pay attention to as well. You look across, but generally we have equities pressured overall. Um, the VIX is still supported, right? Supported on the day when you have a negative or an adverse market environment as well. You expect the VIX, the fear index to keep pushing higher. That has also kept supported over the last couple of sessions as well. Now we are above, we still keep above the 30 dollar per barrel, 30, sorry, the 30 level. What I would like to see um, for us to see a little bit of ease when it comes to market is the VIX back below 20 really really back below 20 until we get back here the risks are clearly 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 still high and obviously that's one you want to also be very very attentive you know so oil market like we talked about gap massively to the upside you have that strong gap to the upside right this is on the uk side even on the us side now there is talk of closure of gap but one thing i want to also have back of mind when it comes to gap closure is yes a lot of times you have you know prices cover up gap but the thing is it doesn't have to happen immediately and then if there is continuous um, reason, the reason why we had a gap in the first place continues to be a very major focus in the market. That should continue, continue to keep it, you know, well supported. So keep the gap open, at least till that sentiment changes. So I wouldn't be in a hurry to try and trade the closure of the gap, right? Because the negativity is still very much high. Yes, I wouldn't like to buy oil at this high, but if I could get some form of pullback, that could really, really be helpful. I'm mean, getting to this session, but it's got for the back of my mind that oil remains well supported. The outlook for oil remains very positive as long as supply constraints remain very, very much pressured. So there's that to keep at the back of my mind and so on. And so for the dollar index and it has kept supported. Yes, mostly not so far from open in today's session, but still overall supported. So that's to keep at the back of my mind. But in the FX space, like I said, the euro is the laggard amongst major FX, right? We have um, look at the euro, for example, still keep pressure. Look at euro against AED, for example, over. I mean, this is just a serious one way traffic to the downside and has kept being pressured, right? Yes, in terms of strength and weakness for today's session, you could look at this as one to pay attention to, right? If we could look at this as well, um, first of all, we've been really, really coming down straight line to the downside. Um, you look at the lows that we have around here, right? It doesn't really make it interesting for me to try and buy. You know, at the lows we have here, you can see the previous lows going back to way back as 2017. And now we are there. Obviously, at these levels, you could expect some form of pullback, right, which is what's not making me as excited as to jump in into the market right now. But the bias remains very, very, very negative for this particular pair. One could look at, you know, a retest of maybe the moving average. Let's look at it on a one-hour time frame. Even though this is far off for today's session, we could look at maybe 
this maybe if we get a pullback towards this you know 50 moving average we have around here that will coincide with the lows of friday that could be interesting for me in terms of for the downside on this but i'm not really excited about jumping in right now to sell this you know at the moment you look at the likes of euro and nzd as well another similar story there right negativity downside pressure is still very much in play and right now we are really really at the lows really 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 low the last time we, we showed that this level was way back was way back to 2017 as well so in as much as yes downside is still very much expected as long as there is no progress in the talks as long as the negativity continues to escalate obviously you expect further pressure for the likes of the euro because the eurozone will suffer the most in terms of the economic um, economic you know damage from this so there's that to also pay attention to right but despite all of that I do not want to still be caught selling on the lows. What I'd like to see would be maybe a pullback, maybe towards this 1.59. If I could get that, that would be more interesting to play, you know, to look out for in terms of the session ahead. Look at Euro and Card, similar story there as well. Really anything back towards this moving averages could help me. We could look at it on a 30 minute time frame, maybe back to this level, very similar to the lows of Friday. Maybe if we could get that, then I'll be interested in looking for a downside on this particular one. But in the meantime, I'm not looking to jump into um, selling the euro at the lows at the moment. Euro US is also an interesting one to look out for. Um, you look at Euro US as well. We've always, always kept, we've kept pin, printing fresh and fresh and fresh lows, right? Where we're trading right now, yes, it's very low as well. So we can't really still rule that out. If you look at where we are right now, I mean, it was also going back to 2020, very close to this cluster of lows that we've had around here. So that also makes me very, very, very cautious about trying to sell this at the lows. But right now we pulled up towards this round number around 1.09, you know, the lows of Friday as well. And we're looking to move lower from here. We could look at that, maybe just look to target just as lows back again and risk just above this level. But it's not something I'm really, really excited about jumping into. So I'm being a little bit very picky, you know, with the kinds of trades that I'm taking right now. Generally, we still have a more advanced environment in the market. Um, the euro is still the negative or the laggard amongst the major effects. The pound itself is also pressured. So there's that to pay attention to. There's not been much, you know, positivity in terms of the talks generally. Um, in terms of progress, there's not been much positivity. There are still more and more sanctions coming in. And even with oil prices, if there are more talks on oil embargo going into the session, that obviously will make oil prices continue to shoot higher. That should support the card. It even should support commodity currencies like the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, even generally more in the session ahead. So we have to look at that. If you want to take any trade, you want to look to pairing strength versus weakness. Euro is weak at the moment. Strength in likes of the AUD, NZD, I also want to look out for even the dollar, even the card, but I wouldn't want to sell at the lows. I like to see better technical you know, levels before I look to enter. On the calendar, it's going to be a light one. We don't really have much, much going on in the calendar. Yes, we have retail sales year over year for the Eurozone. And with that, obviously, we're expecting better, better retail sales compared to the previous numbers much expectation and even the previous numbers but you don't expect markets to leave the current geopolitical policy cloud that we have over our heads right now and pay attention to the likes of retail sales or data generally so obviously i don't expect it to do anything in markets apart from this we don't have anything anything major um to pay attention to is it Okay, we already even had, oh, sorry about it, we already had the data for Eurozone. It came out strong, rather. Right? It came out stronger than expected. I was mixing that up at the moment. Yes, but you don't expect the Euro to have, you know, so much, so much, you know, in terms of upside from this particular one. Yes, it could, it could be a little bit of excuse or a little bit of reason for just a little bit of breathing space or breathing room for the likes of the Euro. But I don't expect it to have any, any lasting effect just yet so apart from that we don't have any much going on on the calendar it's really a light one so i expect the overall sentiment to really be driven by headlines by developments in europe um general sentiment is still more negative um headlines will be very very sensitive for markets and then if any 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 you know new development obviously you want to see that play out in the markets for now keep it simple it's just monday the week is still very long it's still a lot to go on with the week and then um, if you have any questions about what we just said, please do not hesitate to send us a message and we'll see how we can break that down better for you. Thank you very much. Um, do enjoy the rest of your trading session. Bye for now.